in the last section we look at growth of a function we saw some functions grows faster than the other functions we also saw uh, if a function is belong to a big o notation big omega notation or big theta notation in this section we going to look at the efficiency of a algorithm how can we find out the complexity of a algorithm how quickly can an algorithm uh, execute like for example will it take 5 seconds 5 days or 5 hours or 5 years and we want to see the efficiency of that algorithm based on how long it will take to fin uh, finish executing this algorithm so how can the efficiency of an algorithm be analyzed one measure of efficiency is the time used by the computer to solve the problem using that algorithm a second measure is the amount of computer memory required to implement that algorithm so we're going to look at only the first one we're not going to look at the space complexity space complexity is the second one that measures the amount of memory a computer is required to execute an algorithm but we only going to look at the run time of a algorithm so given an algorithm how efficient is this algorithm for solving a problem giving input of a particular size to answer this question we ask how much time does this algorithm use to solve the problem so this is what we're going to look at in this section how much time does this algorithm take to solve a problem the other one is how much computer memory does this algorithm use to solve a problem uh, in discrete math we are not going to look at this second one so in your future classes you will learn about it once you finish your data structure class because we need to learn the data structure in order to accurately measure the memory usage so to calculate the computational complexity we look at time complexity which is this first one and the space complexity which is the second one so in our class we are not going to look at this space complexity only this time complexity in the last class the we saw that time complexity uh, the efficiency of algorithm is based on the input as well so in computer science uh, we usually consider we going to look at uh, if the input is really huge very large what would be the efficiency of the algorithm so we are not too much concerned with what would be the efficiency of algorithm if the input size is very small we will measure the time complexity in term of number of operation and algorithm uses so number of operations mean like using uh, some comparisons addition of integers the multiplication of integers the division of integers so any other basic operations will be take into accounts so if you have like a if statement it does some comparison the comparisons once will also taken into account using this time complexity we can analyze and see whether it is practical to use a certain algorithm given some input size for a given input type uh, size is it practical to use it so if the input size takes like uh, time, time complexity shows that it takes n factorial time then it may not be very efficient for a large set of data so if you have a uh, input size of uh 100000 that would take forever with the n factorial function but if it was like input input size is 10 maybe you can have it done in a very quick time we can also compare the efficiency of different algorithms using this uh, by looking at the complexity of algorithm 
okay which algorithm works better given this uh, input size and we gonna inc uh, ignore the hardware and software in your computer so we are not gonna look at are you using core i7 or core i3 when we look at the complexity we only look at the efficiency of the algorithm like I said before to analyze the time complexity of an algorithm we determine the number of operations such as comparison and arithmetic operations so arithmetic operations like addition multiplication division also we're going to look at comparisons we can estimate the time a computer may actually use to solve a problem using amount of time required to do these basic operations I just talked about. So mainly we will focus on the worst case time complexity of algorithm meaning at the worst case given an algorithm at the worst case how long will it take to execute the algorithm. So this worst case complexity algorithm uh, the worst case provide the upper bound on the number of operation an algorithm used to solve a problem with input of a particular size. For example, if you had a graph like this, after a certain input size, the worst case will be your upper bound right here. The best case would be your lower bound after a certain input value. So you might have average case in somewhere in between some other function in section 3.1 uh, we went through few algorithms like given a set of elements in an array how can you find the maximum value in that array also we look at how can we search for a item in an array and how can we sort an array so before getting to that, I will explain to you some fundamental things that we should be familiar with when calculating the time complexity. Let's say you need to compute the complexity of the following code fragment. So I'm not giving a pseudocodes, this is just from C++ code. Let's say I want to determine the time complexity by looking at this code. So let's look at the cost and the time this algorithm, this piece of code will take. So right here, the first line, which will take C1 time, meaning some constant time to execute. So it would be big O of 1. Because if you were to execute in your computer, it will take maybe one nanosecond something like that so I'm going to call that one nanosecond is the constant C1 so that would be one time so this one also the same it will take another constant time maybe another nanosecond so it would take another one time so now I have a while loop so this while loop will take a uh, another constant it could be three nanosecond or something but in here what am i saying is i start with one goes all the way to n that means how many iteration will it go through within these two curly braces it will go through n number of iterations So my time would be n, but I'm going to say it's n plus 1. Why did I put plus 1 in here? That's because after it goes through all these iteration at the end, it check this statement one more time to see if it is valid. At that time, it will be false, so you exit out of the loop. Because of that one extra step, I put n plus 1. So, for example, let's say this n was equal to 3.
then at the first iteration i would be 1 n would be 3 right because i'm saying n should be 3 i is given it's 1 so this uh, condition satisfied is become true because of that it goes through one iteration come back to the top now i got incremented because of that now i is 2 n is still 3 now i look at this condition is it true or false okay is it still true because of that i go through another iteration now i get incremented again now i become 3 is 3 is less than or equal to 3 it is because of that i go through another iteration now i'm here what happened to my i i got incremented again now i is 4 So you go back to the top, check is 4 is less than or equal to 3. It's not less than or equal to 3. So you do not go through the another iteration. You just exit out of this while loop. But if you really count, because of this last iteration we had to close this loop, I had an extra step here. Because of that, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, meaning n plus 1 comparisons was happening in here. That's why I'm saying this is n plus 1 instead of n. What about this line right here? What would be its cost? How many times will this uh, line get executed? You know this while loop iterate n times i said here n plus one because this comparison was done n plus one but inside here it only iterate n times so this line right here only get executed n times because of that i can call it takes c four times which is we'll execute n times so what about this inner while loop? First, we will just look at this while loop. Let's forget about this outer loop. So I'm going to say it's going to take constant five time, uh, constant time. I'm going to call it C5. So how many times will this uh, comparison happen in here? So like I said, with this outer loop, which took n plus 1 time, right? So this one also, it goes from j equal 1, we start with 1, all the way to n. Just like this one, we start with 1, all the way to n. Because of that, this inner loop by itself will take n plus 1 time. But, this is inside this outer loop. This outer loop iterate n times. From here to here, it iterate n times. Because of that, I can say n plus 1, but I have to multiply that by n as well. This inner loop, this while loop, inner while loop is n plus 1. Then I multiply it by n because of this outer loop iterate n times. So I can simplify this further and say n is squared plus n. This line right here, sum equal sum plus 1. This will take some constant time as well. So if we just look at this line right here with this inner loop, how many times will it iterate? You know this inner loop iterate just n times, right? Not n plus 1. Only this one is n plus 1. This is only n times. This inner loop. So. But we also have outer loop. From here to here. Also it's going to iterate n times. So inner loop also going to iterate n time. Because of that. This inner loop take n, n iteration. N 
times and multiply by this outer loop n. So you can simplify it further and say it takes n square. So what about this line j equal j plus 1 which is the same. It's also going to take inner loop n times, outer loop another n times, n multiplied by n, you get n squared. So the last one, I have i plus plus. What would be the time of this one? This i plus plus is only iterate based on this outer loop. This outer loop only iterate n times because of that this i plus plus iterate n times. Now I have the cost and the time. So to find the total running time of this uh, algorithm I need to multiply the cost by time and add all these up. Oh there's a simpler way. You look at the highest term among this and that would be your answer. The highest term is n squared. So you're going to say time complexity of this algorithm is n squared because as the input grows larger and larger, this constant doesn't really matter. What end up mattering is this largest term. But without doing that, without just assuming this is the answer, let's go through a proof. So let's look at the total running time by multiplying cost, multiply by time, then uh, adding these terms up. So the first C1 times 1 is C1 itself. Constant 2 multiplied by 1, it's constant 2 as well. Because 1 multiplied by any, anything is itself. Then I have C3 multiplied by n plus 1, meaning if you multiply constant 3 with n, you get C3. Then you multiply C3 by 1, you get a C3. So that's why I get n times C3 plus C3. What about this one? C4 times n, you get n times C4. Then 5 multiplied by this. C5 multiplied by n squared. You get C5 n squared plus C5 n. So that's what I got. You can switch this around. Doesn't matter. C5 n squared or n squared. C5 same thing. And the last one. C5 multiplied by n. You got C n times C5. So right here I have C6, C6 multiplied by n squared is C6 n squared, n squared C6, C7 multiplied by n squared you get n squared times C7, the final one n multiplied by C8 you get n C8. So I can simplify this further. So here's a constant, there's a constant by itself, there's another constant by itself. So I can add C1 plus C2 plus C3 and say come up with a different constant. So if you add this up, it's just going to be another constant. So I'm going to call it Cx. Then I see uh, there's n multiplied by a constant here. Another n multiplied by a constant there and here and right there. Four of them. So I can combine these two. So I have a common n, n being common to all of these five, uh, four terms. So I can take out n and say c3 plus c4 plus c5 plus c8 because that's common. So what else can I do? So I see n square uh, here. So 
So n square common to all of these. So I can take out the n square. So now I have n square c5 plus c6 plus c7. So just like what I did to this one, I can look at all of these and give it uh, some uh, constant value. So I'm going to say all of that is C CY and all of this is CZ. So I have some simplified further. So whenever you find the time complexity, there are two things you should uh, consider. Find the fastest growing term among all of these terms. So I have three terms. What is my fastest growing term here? So this would be my fastest growing term. Then it say take out the coefficient. So what is the co coefficient? So if you have 4x times 4x y squared, 4 is the, so for example if you have 4y squared, something like that, your coefficient would be this 4. So that's the meaning of a coefficient here. So it says take out the coefficient. So what is my coefficient here? This constant value. So I'm going to take it out. So my answer is going to be this n squared. So these constants doesn't really matter. So as the input size grows, what really matters is this n squared. That's the one that grows fastest. The others become negligible. Because of that, I can say time complexity of this uh, algorithm right here is theta n squared.